Welcome back, Ashy Knuckle family, friends, faithful, everyone. I'm your host today, Mosey P. I'm with Marky G and Johnny Dubs. Say hello, someone. Hello. <laughs> hey, what's up? I'm still Marky G, I think. Hey, we're just uh, here. Well, nobody can see you unless they're watching the video. You can only hear. Okay, I'll stop that. All right, we're going to talk about We're going to get straight <laughs> into things. We're going to talk about uh, Dirty Dana. Petty Dana. Petty whatever Dana. you want to call him. He over <clears throat> here just dumping on Mr. Naganu. Nganu. Just dumping on him. Talking about the baddest man on the planet is on the UFC roster. You going in at Tyson Fury with it. Hey, it is what it is. Then after that, we're going to talk about the robbery. Robbery. Not highway robbery, but robbery of one young fighter in the flyweight division. And then we'll talk about these uh, main event and co-main event of the upcoming pay-per-view this weekend. So... John, tell me how you feel about Dirty Dana. Well, I think Dana is uh, doing everything right. He's a great promoter. His, uh, like he, may, he has a point. Like You can't, in the MMA space, the, the, all the talent is focused in the UFC. You go to anywhere else, and you don't have the same level of competition. Not saying that these guys are not good. Like, they do get, like older fighters, and some guys do come from other organizations into the UFC. But, like, comparing the PFL roster to the UFC, like, it, it's incomparable. It's, it's not even in the B League. It's like the D League. So, and the whole, uh, <laughs> people love to talk about McGregor and Floyd, and everyone else in the UFC wants to do that and make the big money. But it wasn't McGregor doing it. It was the simultaneous lightweight and featherweight champion of the UFC versus um, Floyd Mayweather. So Francis Ngannou, he's no longer the UFC heavyweight champion. He's just a fighter from a that hasn't had a fight in two years. Big whoop. Now we have John Jones as the UFC heavyweight champion, and if Dana wants to back him. Who do you think it, uh, Tyson Fury is going to actually take seriously? Someone that can't even hold up their own in of, like, promotions for their own fights? Or partnering with Dana White and the UFC, proven uh, to be able to do this before with the uh, Mayweather-McGregor fight? It's pretty simple. All right, I got a question for you, John. Real quick. Since you talked about the PFL as the D leagues. You skipped right over B and C, even B minus. <laughs> I got a question for you right now. If I could get to it. Alright, alright. Have you ever heard of a Denise Dennis Goldstov? Gold Goldsov. Goldsov. Goat like boat, but with a G. Goat Sov. Literally who? Literally who? Okay, okay. Have you ever heard of a Danilo Marquez? Nope. Uh, Henan Ferreira? Nope. What? Oh, okay, you, you might have heard of this guy. Uh, Maurice Green. You might have heard of mm -hmm. him. You heard of him. If you've seen him, you heard of him. I don't know. I, I, it's not ringing a bell. What about Jorgen De Castro? Mm, no shot. Okay, th those are some of the names that's listed at the top of the heavyweight standings for, I guess, their tournament coming up. Yeah, the tournament coming up. Those are some of the names. Now, Maurice Green used to fight in the UFC. I believe he trains with... Doesn't he still train with John Jones? 
Or he did train with John Jones? I oh, think he so you're used saying to. that the UFC floppy seconds go to the PFL and Bellator. Ooh, Who would have ever thought? Yeah, if it's you hard can't to cut it and hack it in the UFC, you go to the PFL or Bellator and you get your bag. They paid Anthony Pettis a ridiculous amount of money. You know, hey, when's man, the last time he... He was on the Wheaties box. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. They got Marlon Marias. So he's lost four out of his last five in the PFL. He's been over here for that long already? Marias? Mm-hmm. Or are you talking about uh, mm-hmm. Pettis? Pettis. Yes, Pettis. But in my opinion, the lightweights over there, they, they, they're a little tougher than these other weight classes. I'm not saying they could come over to UFC and be champion, but they do have a lot of potential. That dude, uh, Clay Collard, that he lost to, he's not bad. He's pretty good. But other than I mean, that, he I was, can't really uh, tell you anybody he was, else. He, he's another UFC alumni. Uh, from how long yes. ago? Very, very uh, long ago. He wanted to be a boxer, though, instead, right? Uh, there was a little bit of that, and there was a little bit of he just was a low-grade journeyman that kind of just had exciting fights, but never could make that hump. Yeah, he got his ass kicked by Matt uh, Max Holloway. So has a lot of people. So did Anthony Pettis. Uh, I, I can think of one man that never got his ass kicked by Matt Holloway, and that man is the best, the GOAT. Of the featherweight division now. That second fight, he got his ass kicked. Conor McGregor. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, and Conor. Uh, Conor. Conor. <laughs> Conor. He get his ass kicked by uh, Max Holloway either. <laughs> yeah. And Con- well, that's it. Conor McGregor. Neither did he Justin can either. lose. He can lose the next twenty fights. Whatever. He's still going to be one of the greatest fighters to ever do it. <clears throat> Because of what he did, he literally dragged the UFC to a whole new generation. He brought it into the modern digital age. Like he he has helped grow that company and the sport. You can't you can't underestimate the how much he's done for the sport as a whole. So you're, and be what you're saying is he's the attitude era of the UFC. Well, he's also yeah. the only, guy, like, the first guy to do the double champ stuff. Like, and everyone first. saw him do that and think, "Oh, I want to do that." No one had to be to fair. No one else was allowed to do that before him. They didn't allow people to do that. If you wanted to switch weight classes, you had to get rid of the belt. You had to disown the belt first. Otherwise, well, they wouldn't let no you do one it. Could carry, no one could carry promotions like he did. If you if people were selling fights like McGregor, they could do whatever they want. All I'm saying is if you if you make Dana enough money, you get a lot of slack. If you cause Dana to lose money, he's gonna make your life hell. Agreed. The only thing I disagree, I wouldn't call him one of the greatest of all times. I would gr- one of the greatest entertainers of all times in the UFC, but I I don't think he even has a leg to stand on as one of the greatest fighters go, of all time. Game go changer. Look at game changer. Fight. Yeah, he's a game go changer. He is. Changer. But look at his fights when he was in his prime. And don't tell, like, he was such a great fighter. And then when he did the boxing thing, he fell off very hard. He got got money, started being lazy, he didn't have that hunger. Well, if he wasn't a good... Let's just say... McGregor had no, like didn't have the charisma or whatever to get all that money, and he's still like hungry. I I still think he would be today like one of the he would be a champ in some weight class. No doubt. I don't think he beats Volk. I don't I don't see a weight class that he could compete in that he could be champ right now. I think he would struggle in 170. So, so, I don't think he beats Volk, and I definitely 
don't think that he's going to be. I don't think um, he defends like 155 even if he won it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I well, agree I mean, with that. After he won it, I don't think he defends it either way. Because he had a list of killers coming for him. He had oh, RCA, yes. who was still solid. He had Tony Ferguson at the time, who was killing it. Even Kevin Lee at the time. He had Habib, of course. He had a lot of people that was going to take that title from him. Mm hmm. He made uh, the right career the, choices. The guy that beat Taxi Cab Driver? Huh? The what? Oh, the, the, that one guy that beat a uh, uh, real estate agent to become champion and beat up uh, Taxi Cab Drivers? Before uh, Conor McGregor became a champ, who did he really beat? Short notice Chad Mendez? Max Holloway. Just starting out uh, Max Holloway? I mean... His resume wasn't exactly great before he became champ either. He got the he got the quick road up. We have many podcasts about this. He he got a good. One. You're just a hater, man. No, nah, I mean I respect his what he brought to the game, but he's a little overrated. He is, and I think even even nowadays more and more people are realizing that. But he did bring a lot of people into the game. I'm not hating on him that much. I think Khabib was one of the most talented fighters there are. He did not have the most entertaining fights. Well, I think a better fighter that has entertaining fights and is the GOAT and who should be able to fight Tyson Fury is John Jones. Because he is the baddest man on the planet. If you put him in a room with anyone, I, he's going to come out on top. No, always. Oh, I'm saying. My hand will beat him. Yep. His wife got about... Okay, if, 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 if there is no referee in that room with him, Matt Hamill would be a corpse. His wife won. Uh... Have you seen the footage? He can date her. He's he what? He can date her. Say again. He can ate her. Oh, you saw it. Mhm. Mm Are you being like Sal Diamato judging, or, or? <laughs> Mike Bell, uh, which judge are you being right now? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm just messing with you, John. Yeah, Let's Dana just say, White is not playing if about I, this I, stuff. I, I, I get it. I give Dana White and his wife that fight. Dana White can eight. That that was not a. That was not an actual fight. That was promotion for power slap competitions that was premiering that weekend. It was all um, part of the plan, man. It was all part of the plan because Dana White is one of the greatest promoters ever, so he shot he tried to show his power slap. No, but for real. On the John Jones situation, I think John Jones does deserve that fight. But Dana White is correct saying that that fight needs to happen in an MMA ring because John Jones will win that fight in an MMA ring. If they go into a boxing ring, John Jones gets destroyed. Period. They are both the baddest man on the planet in their own leagues. But, alright, so how about we just have a no rules? Like, you can just do whatever you want. Let's we'll see who comes out on top. Like, an actual fight, right? The crackhead that weighs 145 or pounds that broke into Anthony Smith's house. Yes. All I'm saying is that 145-pound crack addict would not leave John Jones' house. I don't know, man. I don't know. Well, John Jones would straight-up murder him. I and he has his know. dog that is, like, really well-trained. Like, know. no, I'm, I'm talking about John would, would pull a gun and just gun him down. Well, I thought we was going in a room with nobody else in there. 
They'd probably smoke crack together. <laughs> two men go in, two men mm-hmm. come out. <laughs> no, I hope the, the I mean, fight happens because we haven't had a boxer come through to the UFC since James Tony against Randy Couture. What, what was that, like 15 years ago? Yeah, not a legitimate, um, legitimate boxer, yeah. And he got... What do, they, what do they call it? He got lassoed, like, straight up. His legs got put together, and he got scooped down, and then next thing you know, he was submitted fairly quickly. Well, we should, we should do a, uh, if they do that fight, they need to do a one-round MMA, one-round boxing. Like the Rod Tang DJ fight. I mean, I, I, I like the original chance? plan that, uh, I like the original plan that Francis and uh, Tyson had where they would do one in the ring and one in the MMA fight. I mean, it's pretty predictable what's going to happen in both those fights, but at least with Francis, it was a little less unpredictable because they're both just punching for it anyways. With John Jones, he's going to take down Tyson and just have his way with him in the MMA fight, and then Probably you, get you don't knocked think out. You just start throwing elbows or shit to him. He might do that, or he might just play around and go around the outside and leg kick the shit out of him the whole time. There's so many ways to beat a boxer when they're not trained in MMA. I in mean, an MMA fight. John Jones likes to beat his. Well, all right, I should take that back because we we might have seen any evolved John. With uh, the gallon fight, he didn't. He didn't like pussyfoot around. He went straight for the kill. Mm-hmm. He didn't try to beat him in striking. He he just went for what he knew would work. So I'm very curious to see how he pairs up with Stipe, and if he fights after that, how he pairs up against Sergey. Well, that's what we was talking about earlier, John. That is that fight might not be happening because. It's kind of strange for Dana White to just throw that out there right now when if he knew that the Steve A fight was going to happen, he wouldn't be trying to promote something else. He'd be more focused on promoting Steve A against John Jones. Oh, it's well, more because Fury yeah, yeah. has a fight coming up too, doesn't he? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And Dana is also trying to, like, if you haven't been checking Francis Naganu's, um feed, He's been very desperate, like, begging Tyson for the fight. Mm-hmm. And, like, he, he's been, like, po- posting quite frequently about trying to get any attention. Because, you know, Dana, very spiteful, very petty. But when you fuck around for an entire year and a half, and you say that you just didn't want to fight, they want to give you a fight, but when you were champ at the time, you're saying you are injured... Like, the whole, like, story has changed a few times from his camp. And, you know, Dana White's not the most uh, honest person. He's very liberal with the truth. But He's very emotional. I do believe him when he said that Francis is very difficult to work with. Because we also saw that with one. Like, demanding things that are just very unreasonable. Not understanding that when you're negotiating, like... I don't know. It just it seems like he wanted the moon and the stars. And the PFL is dumb enough to give it to him. He's not a seller. Like he doesn't bring money in. If he was a McGregor like star, I could understand. You know what I mean? But you have a freak punch and you're a heavyweight champion, you defended one time and it was just one of the worst heavyweight fights I've seen. Did abysmal numbers, so. But hey, more power to him. I I hope he does well for the year that the PFL remains open before they go bankrupt. I think what PFL's attempting to do is an all or nothing type situation with Jake Paul's contract and Francis's contract in this super fight division. It's a scramble to make as much, like, headlines and draw eyes to their company as last-ditch effort. I really do believe that. 
Uh, I don't know what's going to go on with the whole purchasing of Bellator situation, but we'll, well see. I mean, that's like sort of why, like Dana came out the day that he announced that he was joining the PFL, and he came out with a whole long list of great, amazing fights. Took the piss away of him, and now yep. that he's been calling out Tyson Fury, Dana White's like, "Oh, I will co-promote with you." One of the biggest organizations, like. Because the UFC is is in, is really incredible how big it is. It's like what twelve, thirteen billion dollars, possibly even more. Just now, find a deal to merge with the WWE. Considering it was almost at the brink of failing twenty years ago. It'll be interesting how that contract or works out. I'm pretty sure they're just going to be two separate entities that. They're going to continue trying to brand separately. But, well, yeah. I think that they're going to have, since it's Endeavor, they have more leverage when it comes to negotiating TV rights and, you know what I mean? Like that collective mm-hmm. bargaining and having your, all your, um, not residuals, but all the, all the footage they have copyrighted all in one place. You know what I mean? Like, it gives them a lot of, a lot more power. Yeah. But, hmm. what do you think would be a more inter- entertaining fight? Like numbers out of the out of the way, Fury versus Naganu or uh, Jones versus Naganu in boxing. Actually, both. Either way, and I know I just froze right now. Uh, I don't know. It's a great photo. Make it kickboxing. I think I think if you're gonna have John Jones fight, you should let it. You should have all kicks. So like you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like a kickboxing fight. Which, if you think about it, if you if you do the middle ground of kickboxing with Fury, like yes, it, it incorporates like kicks, something that John knows how to do, but it also like you know what I mean? It's like a good middle ground. Other than, you know, allowing John to just take him down and wrestle for him. Or allowing Fury to just, like, clinch up and constantly jab, you know. I think either way it would be one-sided for both fights. I think the Francis versus Tyson's a more intriguing fight for fighter entertainment-wise. But, yeah, I, I think making more money it'll be John Jones versus Tyson. What do you think, Mosey, about all this? I wish Francis didn't leave the UFC. So we could get that out of the way. <laughs> but it is what it is. And Tyson Fury against John Jones in the UFC, that will bring a lot more eyes to the UFC. Especially with how well they're doing over in the UK in general. That that definitely bring more of a global sense than just the United sense or United States eyes for the UFC but for the most part hoping that John Jones and Tyson Fury actually fight it out this year I don't see it happening it could happen at the end of the year pending on if we get a steep A and John Jones fight soon mm-hmm. I don't really see John Jones fighting three times this year he doesn't really have three entertaining enough opponents to fight. What would be massive, though, is if uh, they do the Super Bowl card, and that's the one that has John Jones against Tyson Fury. They could bring back some uh, credential to that card, because that card used to be one of the major ones as well, the Super Bowl weekend card. Yes. They kind of sh- strayed away from that one now, and it seems like it's they only focused on International Fight Week for the big ones. And well, they were also doing big cards for uh, New Year's cards, so I think they were just running out of like stars by by February. Yeah, because I mean, even uh, MSG and yeah, MSG in fucking November also. Yep, they load up at the end of the year with those two cards. Mm-hmm. They always try to have the last fight of the year just be explosive. 
and then the MSG is always something. So maybe that kind of pulled away from the Super Bowl weekend. But they should get back to it. I think that's a perfect opportunity. Now it seems like the February card's in what? Abu Dhabi? Yeah, but uh, to be fair, they are a, a global company and uh, Dana, you know, the whole international fight week and fight island because of the COVID thing and being the only company to have stuff going on, like it, he he has a sense of loyalty, right? So that's why he says he'll always like come to Jacksonville in Florida because they allowed him to host. He needs to come back to Jacksonville with a better card next time. Yeah, the one that's coming here right now is kind of trash. I mean, you might as well watch that on. Uh... You might as well uh, stream it. I... Yeah, I was like, I. I don't think I'm gonna buy a ticket for that one. I can't. I can't go back to the UFC with that kind of fight after being at one. Mm-hmm. Now, if one FC comes here, I'll gladly go. I don't care who's fighting. Yes. <laughs> I think we uh, talked about this topic a little too long. We should jump ship quickly to this Kaikara. France, uh, who was he fighting? A Ale- Alebzi or something like that? Alebski or something? Amir Alabaziz? Okay, yeah. Or... Him? Him? I saw the Pretty fight. Pretty sure I murdered that. I scored it the first round to Kai. Fourth and fifth round, definitely to Kai. So I had it 3 2 regardless. And you could. Second and third round, you could give it to. One of them, they could go either way. So, I had a 3-2, just to be fair. The judges clearly didn't see it that way, so. Well, two of the judges didn't see it that way. Uh, Saudi Amato and somebody else. It kind of sucks when you got these judges messing up the outcomes of what everybody else saw. But, that's what they get paid for. They got a lot more experience than majority of the fans that are complaining about these decisions and the only thing I can say is what the cliche thing is never leave it in the hands of the judges but sooner or later that's got to stop we've been talking about this for years right guys mm-hmm. well I think this is this <clears throat> emblematic of a symptom of the past year or two of an increasing amount of terrible decisions of blatant robberies and it's getting egregious to the point that I would love to see a movement online to or something to get the UFC to change its scoring or something because it it is so bad and it's so like so many important fights have been decided by terrible judging and it's affecting people's careers it's affecting the sport and i think it's you could argue that it could be like something shady could be happening because i don't know if you saw some of these like four cards this year they're very questionable i did not see the fight but i'm sitting here looking at all the round by round statistics and I saw a couple of the highlights. And just by looking at the significant strikes and total strikes, because it seems to be more of a uh, striking heavy match from the statistics, even the takedowns and submission attempts, it does look like Kaikara won the fight pretty easily just by looking at striking numbers, to be honest. It looks like he ran away with round, round four, Ran away with round five. He was pretty dominant in round three, according to the numbers. And the closest one was round two. And one. But he still edged those out, too. So, I didn't see the fight. I don't know. Numbers don't lie, though. Well, they do on the UFC website, but... Why are you doing like that? <laughs> Why are you doing like that? Because they're not the most trustworthy. <laughs> All right, so 
let's let's go ahead and slide on to the next topic because we could talk till we're blue about how bad the judging's been overall the past few years and how some guys get screwed over like just like that was a shot now it wasn't his shot but say if Kai won again he could possibly be in line for another title shot Mm mm-hmm easily depending on who wins coming up if uh I, I what's the name Pantoja wins I don't know if they do an instant rematch. It kind of makes no sense. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you never know. So uh, just breaking news, Alex Pereira tells Ariel Hawani that he will be training with Sean Strickland next week, and Sean Strickland is going to help him learn English. That is sounds like a terrible idea all the way around for him, so good for him. Sean guys? Strickland doesn't have exactly the best record with training partners or English. Now you guys Which is why I would I would love to see this. Like, I, w- I would give anything to be a fly on the wall for that. You think he's going to like spar... Say they're supposed to go like fifty. You think he's gonna go a hundred? Yeah, say? he's gonna go hundred, one hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, remember what was the last time they fought? I remember when they fought. Sean Strickland went to sleep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That freak left your hand, man. But you guys ready to jump on to this 289? Yeah. Well, they've only won one worthwhile fight, and that's Vinny versus uh, Oliveira. And I, I really have to wonder... Hold on, John. That's on UFC 289. We're going to get to that. There's a lot to talk about with that one compared to the main event with Nunez against uh, Irene Aldana. She's got a puncher's chance, like I was saying earlier. Unless Amanda just decides to give the belt away again. I mean, Amanda is just... To me, the only thing that's holding her back is I feel like maybe after she lost her belt, she kind of corrected that. But she seems to have lost a step and doesn't have the same fire as she used to have. For the game. Like, she's one foot out the door already. Thinking about retirement and just expanding her family. I would say that's the only thing holding back Amanda Nunes. Now, Aldana, she's a good boxer. She she definitely does have a puncher's chance in that fight. But we know that she shouldn't win that fight. Johnny Boy? Uh, I don't watch female MMA. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, it it should be entertaining enough. I don't really think that's the actual main event of this fight. The actual main event is probably actually the co-main event with Charles Oliveira versus Darius, which should have happened so long ago. So let's so hear your, your thoughts on that. Here, this is my question. Is this the number one contender fight? And if it is, they, they don't, they, they've shied away from saying that. But if Oliveira wins, do you run Oliveira Islam again? Or do you do the winner of the BMF title? Is that why they're having the BMF title be a thing right now? So if Biddy doesn't win, they can throw in Poirier or Adichie? Does that even make sense for them to fight Islam for the title when they both got decisively beat by Oliveira, who got beat by Islam, and got beat by Khabib, who is, you know, former training partner and coach and best friend with Islam? You know what I mean? Same styles as well. So, yeah, I think Benny winning has the best argument to be made for, oh, he should fight for the title because he, mm-hmm. he's never had the opportunity. And I think he has a very strong chance 
of doing better than the other three mentioned. But honestly, though, if you have Islam, or not Islam, if you have Alvaro win, the only person I really would want to see fight Islam for the belt would be the guy that arguably beat the shit out of him for a good half of a fight. And that's Volkanovski. Give him another chance. If he beats Yair, let him do it. Because who else is going to fight for fight Islam that has a, a serious chance of beating him and having a serious like resume to why why he should fight for the title? Did they say this fight's going to be a number one contender fight? Winner gets title shot or no? Not they officially. have shied away from you. But if Benny wins, it's very hard to not say he should fight for the belt. He's on the Oliveira was very dominant. Yeah. Oliveira was dominant champ. They had the Islam versus Benny, but fucking Joe Rogan said some stupid shit to Dana White and convinced them to make the Islam versus Oliveira, which it was a disaster for Oliveira and I think for Lightweight because Islam is only fought like once. And he has, like, he's going to fight twice a year, nine month break. But then you have people like Aljo that have to do quick turnarounds. But I don't feel bad for Aljo at all. I think Dana should push Islam to fight more too. I mean, it's obviously if Dariush wins this fight, he should be the number one contender. All the other ones are kind of just like cannon fodder at this point. And they're just trying to dig for somebody that could possibly emerge. Uh, I do think if the BMF title is an entertaining enough fight, one of those could slide in just because you could be like the BMF versus the champ. Champ versus champ type deal, even though right. it's a fake title that doesn't exist. You still have, or you could just have the double champ status thing going on and have Volk fight. Because that, that fight did it big numbers, and it was very competitive. But I also wonder if the other lightweights saw that fight and took notes, because Islam looked mortal. Islam was hurt. Islam was put to, you know, push to the limit. So, will any of them follow that path? and figure out how to beat him. I mean, we saw Justin Gaethje's last fight versus Gamrock. He actually went for a takedown. I think that's the first time I've ever seen him go for a takedown. In a long, long time. <laughs> you gotta remember, Gaethje was originally a wrestler <laughs> that fell in love with his hands. He just stopped mixing it up. Well, pound for pound, who, who's... Who's got the skills that could possibly match up with Islam besides Volkanovski? You know what I'm saying? Maybe Leon Edwards, but he's a bigger guy, so that would be uh, Islam moving up to get that that fight. And I don't think Kobe he's gonna Kobe. be as strong. You think Kobe could cut Kobe enough Kobe. weight down to make 155 and For be sure. the same? For sure. If Dustin Poirier, who weighs more than Colby Covington, can make lightweight, Colby can easily do it. He barely cuts weight as is. He fights in his natural weight class, and I think he does extremely well for being like that kind of fighter, especially with all these guys that do crazy weight cuts. Yeah, I think that'd be a very interesting fight uh, because the two different styles of wrestling. And Islam does not have the conditioning that Colby does. Mm -mm. At 170 or at 155, it'd be very interesting. You think Islam can be that competitive at 170? I don't know. But that might, that fight, like I was throwing this out there, but that fight might actually be something that that materializes if Colby beats Leon. That's fair. 
if it's a champion champion fight, I don't think that that really materializes until he gets a couple more wins as champ as lightweight. Because I don't think he just goes straight up for a championship fight, but no. if he comes down for a champ champ fight, maybe. I think Leon would have to do a little bit more, or it would, Kobe would have to do something. He would have to defend at least two to three times before yeah. he even gets that opportunity. Um, yeah. He never defended his belt. And got a... Oh, yeah. Who? I guess that Islam was never defended his belt and fought Volk immediately. Well, it wasn't him challenging for the featherweight title. It was Volk challenging for the lightweight title. And yeah. So He proved the point. Islam... He cleaned out his division. Fought mm-hmm. the same guy three times. That was more on Volk getting the opportunity than it was Islam getting the opportunity. So then that becomes the question of if Islam beats whoever they throw at him as decisively as he beat Oliveira, who cleaned out the division, mind you? Because what? It looked like Oliveira was the new Khabib. He demolished Chandler and Poirier and then Gaethje in incredible fashion. Beating him faster than uh, Khabib did. And then all of a sudden, he just fucking just loses to Islam in a nice manner. So who, who's the guy at lightweight? I was Other trying to figure Bain, that out. But if he loses to Oliveira, it's, it's very hard to have parity. Which is why I think that's an interesting thing going on at middleweight. Is as much as we all love Rob, Rob versus Izzy for a third time is a stretch. Even it, Izzy kind of was saying like he would like to fight a new guy that he hasn't fought before. Mm-hmm. So you have Drickus as an op- like. I think Izzy's rooting for Drickus to to beat Rob so he can fight him. Because they have that like that animosity, but also just to, you know, I, I I imagine it must be, oh, I beat this guy how many times now? And they still want me to fight him again? There's a couple interesting fights for Islam, but they are all, like, two fights away. Like, someone like Fazeev. Fazeev could be an interesting fight for Islam if he wasn't, if he didn't just lose to... Gaethje. So he could be like two fights yeah. away. But that's Mind two you, fights who did, away. Who did, who did Islam beat to earn the title shot against Oliveira who is an impressive champ? Not many. Bobby Green. Bobby Green. Bobby Green. Bobby Green with the big hat. So my question is if Tony Ferguson beats Bobby Green does he get a title shot? No. Absolutely not. This might Mm-mm. this might be uh, Tony's last fight before getting cut if he loses. Yeah, especially with his DUI that he just got. Yeah, he done ran into two cars like like yo. This, well, hey. this is my dude, man. Like Tony Ferguson, he's I, I falling hope. our hard times. We'll get to that, John. I know I, you want to talk I, about I that. I hope. I truly hope that he gets. If he doesn't get cut, then he gets a fat check from PFL or Bellator. Uh, I, as much as I have ragged on the PFL, if they're handing out bags of money to undeserving fighters, Tony Ferguson needs a million dollars. Okay. That man has led okay. for this sport. Okay, okay. Before we get to that, because I feel like you just threw a knife at me with that one. I feel like you're trying to stab me in the heart talking about Tony in this unfair fashion that you have. I I, I love Tony. Bruce. Wait, wait, wait. You stop it right there, sir. We're going to continue on topic and talk about <laughs> Islam and who he will fight if uh, Benny wins or if Charles wins. Let's go. Benny wins, undeniable title shot. Will it happen? Hopefully. 
No guarantees. Charles wins. Oh, man, it's going to throw a whole monkey wrench into the whole thing because you know what might happen? We might get a title defense of the BMF before we get an actual title shot. That's kind of what I was thinking, too. I was thinking, like, right hey, after that. If Charles hey, wins, he he fights the fighter of the or the winner of the BMF title. And then but, they fight that Islam. Because <laughs> he just beat Jorge and Gaethje in impressive and decisive fashion. Like, that... It, it's so hard to... Like, this round robin is so fucking hard to get the... You know what I mean? Because... I know what the variable is. You want to know what it is? What is it? His name is Connor. Or Chandler. Chandler? Come on. Mm -hmm. Be reasonable. He got beat by Oliveira. And MMA Masters Islam would demolish him. I think what they're doing here is they're leaving the options free for things mm -hmm. before they actually link Commit. somebody to Islam for that title shot. So, do you think that if Connor does say, like, wake up tomorrow and says, I want to fight for the title, Dana, do you think they would just give it to him? Skipping Chandler and just let him have that fight? I think they will. No. I don't think they do that. that they got to finish out that series. Not necessarily. <clears throat> I mean, it, coaches where they just coached, the the, the purpose of fought. the show is to have like the story behind it and have the animosity and everything like that. So they have had it before, but those, yeah, I, I think that I think that these two will fight because that's a big that's a big fight all on its own, just because of the way that they like to talk. So yeah, that'll happen, but I do he, think he that the winner of that fight. fight could could get a title shot, especially if Connor wins. That well, if if Michael Chandler wins, why why should he fight Islam when he lost to you know Oliveira? Because people are delusional Islam. about Connor McGregor, and if you beat Connor McGregor, you're automatically a title contender. Well, light day, lightweight division is pretty loaded right now. Like, you could just straight up say, like... This guy. Anybody within the top eight can fight anybody uh, above them, and it's going to be a good matchup. Mm -hmm. So, I would love to see Armin fight for the bill. No one wants to fight him. The, the Gamrot win over him, I think, was... <laughs> stupid um but i i think armin is is a real danger to everyone in the division because they're just they're ducking him and avoiding him well he was one of the people that i thought earlier too but i also think that he's one of the people that it's like two fights away you get two good fights from where he's at right now yeah i could see him as being a title contender but right now with his resume it just it's not that good to where they should throw him up there yet. Well, At least he, one good top five win, and then they can might so like one to two away. Plus, I also think they got other plans for that BMF because, say, okay, they link the winner of Charles and Benny to Islam for the title shot, right? They still have mm -hmm. options, tremendous options. For example, whoever wins out of Chandler and Connor, if the fight happens and we have somebody that's victorious, they will. And I can see it happening without a shadow of a doubt. We'll fight the new BMF title holder straight up. The McGregor Poirier or... It could be Poirier or Gaethje, and you know for a fact he definitely wants that match with Poirier again. I do. Uh, I watched the documentary on that. Well, I finished I, I it. I can see it happening. Personally, 
I, I, I don't think Gaethje would. I think Dustin clears him out. Again? Yep. But what if Gaethje comes in there and uh, shoves him somehow? Takes him down, grounds him pound, gets the rear naked? Uh, I think Dustin is a superior grappler. I mean, he did just sub out Chandler. Chandler. Yeah, When's the last time Gaethje ever won by submission? Has he ever? Hey, you never know. He might be training it. You don't know what these coaches got in mind. Hey, who lost to a one-armed fighter? A lot of people. Back in the... Uh, what was that league called back then? What was PFL before? Was PFL? All I'm saying is Dustin Poirier never lost to one-armed man. And he's sub people before. And he's beaten Gaethje before. World Series? Or world... What was it? What was it? Oh, yeah, it was World, of world Series of Fighting, yeah. World Series of Fighting, right? Yeah. All Nick right. Newell. Did he lose to Nick Newell? No. I don't think he did. Well, we got about nine minutes left. If you want to talk about that Tony Ferguson rise and fall, John, here you go. He, it's just such a, a, a he did lose a tragedy, to a man. lot of these guys that's currently in the top five. In fact, he mm-hmm. lost to four of the top five. And if he fought Poirier, he probably would have yeah. lost to Poirier too. Tony Ferguson was such a special fighter. He had such a good care and he's so unorthodox in a in a in a division full of strikers he could strike but he could also do other things and he's so creative with his strikes and so I wish we could have seen him versus Khabib that is like the dream fight the tragedy and we got it and fighting Gaethje very ill advised I think uh, I think that really took took the full, and he just hasn't been right since. Oh yeah, Gaethje knocked him out. Sorry, I was looking at. Oh, that and then then he went and fought Oliveira and had his arm broken. He's just too tough for you. I'm good. The fall of Tony Ferguson will be one of the saddest moments in MMA history for me because that was my boy and I still love that man but he fell hard after he couldn't fight Habib. He shouldn't have cut weight twice. It broke him. Yeah. And Fighting Gaethje in that way as well, mm-hmm. but I think one loves you together. Yeah, I'm so sad because he was probably the one of the most entertaining fights. You were never going to get a boring fight with him, and he would do the craziest shit that should never work, but somehow pull it off all the time. His dark choke? His what? Oh, dark choke. I thought you said dark joke. I was like, what? (laughs) Yeah, his dark choke was top of the line. Nobody rolled better than him. And just breakdancing after all the wins was just worth it. Which is why up was it, he was something else though. Like he, he yeah, got, he got the in room. I give him that. He man, if we would have got to see him against Habib, man, 
that would have settled it for me. Even though a B beat who did he beat? Dustin, Justin, Connor, right? On his, yep. Oh, for his Stryker, title defenses. Stryker, Stryker. Oh, amazing. He just beats a bunch of strikers with no real grappling or rolling or anything other than striking. But they knew that going into the fight, though. Mm-hmm. Right. Which is... Which is why, like, yeah, you're fighting top guys. Maybe he beat Dos Anjos. There's just no parody going on. He beat Dos Anjos. That's fair. <clears throat> and Gaethje did good for a little bit defending some of the takedowns because he does have a wrestling base, but... Yes. I, I think at that time there wasn't a lot of, like, ground game specialists at that time anyways. Not in the top ten con- or the top mean, five contenders. Well, Oliveira wasn't on his streak at the time that he is now, or that he was like right afterwards. Uh, his shine came like right around that yeah, time. He like he was on his rise at that time, but then Habib dipped. <clears throat> yeah, because he's scared, and now. He's selling dick pills and scamming people with NFTs. Real classy guy. NFTs Tony? are still a thing. Tony's selling NFTs? No, Habib. Oh, Habib? Habib. Habib is... It, he posted one of the most cringiest things i ever seen today. Promoting Metaverse and some crypto scam. Yeah, still and on. it's easily... More cringier than anything that Conor McGregor has done, and Conor has done a lot of cringy things. But ugh. well, we still got uh, Islam to hold it down for the good guys, right? I don't know. We'll, we'll see how he turns out. No, I'm just kidding. He's all right. He ain't too bad. I don't. I don't like the comparisons with Habib that mm. much. Like, he's like Habib Light to me, with slightly better striking. Who Who has he truly dominated though? I mean, yeah, he dominated Charles. I give him that. He dominated Bobby Green. He's dominated a lot of people. And he got dominated by Volk. He got dominated by Volk. I want to say that fight was... That that fight should have been a draw. It should just... It should have been a draw. I would have been fine with the draw. I still think Volk won. You can't just lie on a guy. Do nothing. Oh, the hand fight. The hand fighting... He wasn't even... There was barely any hand fighting going on. Like, let's be real. Like, Volk was just getting annoyed. Like, come on, pussy. Like, do something. You're not even trying to choke me out. Come on. Oh, damn. I didn't and know Islam fought uh, Saruken, too. Did he? Yeah. He's got a... Uh, I'm looking at his little record. He's got, he's got some wins. Besides uh, him getting slept by that dude back in 2015. After that, he played it safe. Then he started going for kills. That's the one thing, though. You can't take that away from uh, Islam. He's he's on a streak, I think, of finishes currently. Let's see. One, two, three, four. His last fight was a decision. Besides that one. But yeah. but before that, before he fought a fellow champion, he was on a streak of five finishes. And submitting Oliveira is actually quite impressive. Yes. Um, to be fair though, that looked a lot like the Oliveira that was a quitter when things got tough, finding the way out. Is that Makachev's fault though? That wasn't. 
Uh, I blame Dana White and Joe Rogan, to be honest. I blame the fact that I started believing in... That's when I just started believing in Oliveira wasn't a quitter like I used to think about him. And then he showed me his quitter side again. I was kind of sad about that. It's like I just started I, I believing. I really don't think he was... I don't think he was 100% in that fight. Like, I think getting stripped and then being forced to go to, you know, Abu Dhabi to fight Islam, having no say in the matter, not, you know, that, uh, I don't know. I, it just wasn't the same guy that just went on a tear. You know what I mean? I forgot he was stripped of the title. I totally forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Over, what, half a pound? Yeah, but you got to make weight, man. And they said that yeah. you know, all the all the nonsense with the scale and blah blah blah. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is with that. I mean, that that just shows the point, though. It doesn't matter because he lost immediately, so. But yeah, I think uh, the next month or so will be very telling to decide lightweight future. Well, in general, the whole, we got this fight coming up and then we we don't have uh, a date for Connor and Chandler. But then we also do have Volkanovski fighting in a few weeks after that. What, two well, weeks after Chandler that? Chandler or two two, three weeks after that, we got Volk fighting. And with that mm-hmm. one, if Volk beats Yair for unification, who's left? You're not going to put Max Holloway in there for the fourth time against Volkanovski. You're just not. And with yeah, the yeah. rankings the way they are, you got Josh Emmett fighting. Who's he fighting? Taporia, I believe, uh, later on this month. And I would say you might have had Arnold Allen if he beat that Hawaiian dude, but guess what happened? He ain't win. So, he derailed the train. The other way is literally just going to be Max Holloway being the gatekeeper, beating everyone off. And then somehow warming his way back in to fight Volk to only get lose again. And then Volk just keeps on trying to get the lightweight. That's what we're going. That's what's going to happen. I think yeah. Volk eventually just becomes a lightweight sooner than later. Because he he is running out of people. If he clears out the division anymore, man, he's probably just going to move up to lightweight. With the title, that's what I'm saying. He didn't have to just make move. it like vacated because he's got nobody left. They're not gonna keep signing him up to fight Max. In fact, I well, see a Ortega yeah. versus Holloway fight before a rematch with either one of them. Well, Deporia could be an interesting fight for Volk, but other than him. I mean, he's not going to get it just off him beating Josh Emmett unless he goes in there and, like, finishes him in the first round. Like, easy clap type of stuff. Josh Emmett at least gets him into the top five, and then they could probably give him someone like an Ortega or an Arnold Allen. Or the loser and then he could pro- of uh, Volk again. Well, no, the loser out of Volk, Volk gets probably an instant rematch. If Yair wins somehow. And then Brian Ortega's left without a dance partner. But I believe we'll see him fight somebody coming up since he lost. <clears throat> and I could see Max Holloway fighting the winner of Josh Emmett and Taporia. Honestly, that's how I could see that happening. That'd be interesting. Because I know they want to push Arnold Allen. So I could see them putting him against Brian Ortega instead. Or if I, I, Ayer loses, he could end up fighting Arnold Allen. And the winner of Josh Emmett and 
to Poirier fights Ortega. Because, basically, the only person that's going to fight Holloway is somebody that they feel deserves a title shot but can't get it yet. And if you beat Holloway, okay, yeah, you got you got to get a title shot. Because he's just smoking everybody else but Volkanovski. I don't think he gets a title yeah. shot from it, but I would really like to see Holloway versus Zombie. Just saying. Let's not forget about my man here. And that's the fight that's probably going to happen regardless because we all know Max is I mean, not going to get a title shot, but he wants to fight Zombie. Zombie wants to fight him. Why not make it happen? Make it happen. Let's get it. Easy fight night somewhere. Easy fight that night. That should have been in Jacksonville. Server. Oh, <laughs> shit. I'm, I'm there. Vacation day. We got those. They will be put in immediately. First in line. I don't even need to see the rest of the card. I'm buying them tickets. Yep, 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 <laughs> yep. I'm going uh, I'm to have a big old Hawaiian flag on my back. <laughs> I'm going to be wearing a Max Holloway shirt while holding a Korean flag. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Now just have Sun Kim with you. It'll be good. There you go. It's <laughs> your older brother, man. What's he doing? Younger brother. So. It's your brother, though. I don't know how old Sun Kim is. He's a very deceptive looking individual. All right, guys, so that about does it for today. I believe I might be doing a follow-up with Brian tomorrow. Hopefully he's uh, stable and ready to rock tomorrow. So if you guys want to jump in tomorrow for one, let me know. It should be a short one. Probably going to give us his uh, thoughts on the whole thing. I will be slaving away at work tomorrow. But on that note, for all the listeners, viewers, if you like what you see, please like and follow the channel, Ashy Knuckles MMA, on YouTube. And on Twitter, what are we called? Same thing, Ashy Knuckles on Twitter. Yeah, Ashy Knuckles MMA. Ashy Knuckles MMA on Twitter. Um, Mosey P. I'm Marky G. And Johnny, um, Johnny Dubs. Dubs. There he goes. There's Johnny Dubs. That's it for us. Zip it up and zip it out. Peace.